ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. Happening tonight, an investigation is underway at a local high school after video shows an employee pinning a student down with his knee on their neck. Thanks for joining us. I'm Steve Atkinson and I'm Lindsay Pena. According to the Grossmont Union High School District, the images buzzing on social media stem from a fight between two students. The incident is causing enough controversy, though, that the superintendent is speaking out tonight. In light of the events that have taken place in America over the last two years, it's completely understandable that students and members of our school community are upset. We at the district are making sure Principal Frumas has all the resources she needs. As of now, the employee who has not been identified has been placed on paid administrative leave pending the results of the investigation. We will have more on this developing story as it unfolds. Also tonight, honoring the fallen tributes for the 13 military service members killed in last week's suicide bombing in Afghanistan. They're popping up at local businesses everywhere. Our ABC tennis reporter Laura Acevedo shows us what moved a La Mesa business owner to pay her respects. The owner tells me she felt it was only right to set up this tribute here at her cafe because she too has several members of her family in the military. Pink Rose Cafe in La Mesa is known for its pop of pink. Both inside and outside, the shop is covered in flowers and the owner's favorite color. But it's this table inside that's been getting attention in the last couple days. I wanted to join in honoring them. Nadia Zamora owns the shop. It was her idea to print and display these 13 Polaroids along with the American flag, honoring the 13 service members killed in Afghanistan in a suicide bombing last week. You know, we wanted to really take a, our time to learn about them, to make sure that their, their sacrifice and their legacy um, is not forgotten. Her brother is a Marine who also served in Afghanistan. Four other family members also serve. The days that we wouldn't hear from them, from him, the phone calls, um, it's, they, they do a lot of sacrifices. Other local businesses have done tributes of their own. All four Tony Pepperoni locations reserved tables and poured 13 beers for the service members. Mike Hess Brewing in Imperial Beach also doing something similar with 13 beers and 13 American flags. <laughs> This tribute will stay up until at least Veterans Day, and Samora hopes it serves as a reminder the sacrifices of these men and women will not be forgotten. These people were loved, you know, by many, not just their family members, and we want to embrace that. In La Mesa, Laura Acevedo, ABC 10 News. And there are no new signs tonight of those five Navy sailors still missing after that helicopter crash off our coast. The MH-60S helicopter crashed Tuesday afternoon during operations on the USS Abraham Lincoln. One person was quickly recovered and is in stable condition, but five sailors, they are still missing tonight. Five other sailors aboard the carrier, they were also hurt. They were all in stable condition. And now to a Team 10 investigation. There are questions about a former high school softball coach in the South Bay after recent accusations of inappropriate behavior. Our Team 10 investigator Melissa Messia discovered this is not the first time he's been accused by concerned parents. Softball is a sport Candace's daughter loved. It's also one she said her daughter and several of her teammates quit because of a former coach at Sweetwater High School. Why did they quit? Because of this individual, because of his demeanor, because of his behavior, because of the things that he would do. The school district confirmed the assistant coach is no longer at the school. Still, Candace did not want to show her face during our interview, worried her daughter might face backlash. She said back in May she noticed a change in her daughter. She seemed very closed off. Her daughter eventually told her about her assistant softball coach. At this point, Team 10 is not naming the former coach. He has not been charged with any crime. But Candace said he treated her daughter in a way an adult should not. She said that included putting hands on her. She said that the individual touched her on her lower back ran his hand down her buttock mm -hmm. and that was one incident. The For what? what? Why did he do that? Supposedly showing her her form, but when we physically showed on each other's body what the touch looked like, even as an adult, as a grown woman, mm -hmm. 
you don't touch another female like that without her consent, especially a minor child. She said the coach also put his hand on her daughter's thigh. Relating to the sport, he has no business touching her thighs, much less going to her inner thigh. When Candace went to the school about those incidents and what she called his aggressive behavior, the administration launched their own investigation. In a response letter to Candace dated July 12th, Sweetwater's principal said the investigation found many of the alleged actions by the coach were substantiated. That included the two incidents where Candace said the coach touched her daughter. But the letter goes on to say the actions were not severe enough or pervasive enough to be considered sexual harassment. The school instead found the behavior unprofessional. At this point, I feel that we're not protecting our daughters. I spoke with the founder of Safe for Athletes, an organization dedicated to protecting athletes from sexual abuse. What it boils down to is that there aren't policies in place. And if there are policies in place, they aren't clear for either the athlete or for uh, the coaches. Former Olympian Catherine Starr said coaches need to be very clear when dealing with kids. If you don't have this open dialogue of communication, then what you're doing is you're just invading the boundaries and you're just pushing past what is comfortable. And every time you push past that boundary, you've now silenced the athletes. Team 10 learned of a similar investigation when the same man coached baseball at Benita Vista High a few years ago. At least two parents told Team 10 they also complained about the coach's behavior. Like Candace, one parent filed a formal harassment complaint. The parents said in 2018, the coach kept a picture of a man's private area in the dugout on the whiteboard for several days. The parent also said the coach mimicked a sexual act in front of the team. In a third allegation, the parents said the coach made comments to three Benita Vista baseball players, which contained strong sexual overtones. A response letter to the parent from the school said the actions of the coach were substantiated, but like Candace, the letter stated there was no evidence of sexual harassment. I contacted Sweetwater Union High School District. A spokesperson told me they take allegations of misconduct very seriously, but she would not answer specific questions about the investigations here at Sweetwater or Benita Vista. She confirmed the coach is no longer at Sweetwater, but would not give me the date he left the school. I reached out to the coach for comment, but I haven't heard back. Candace has filed a police report with the National City Police Department. The department confirmed an ongoing investigation. I honestly feel from beginning to end, the ball was dropped completely and nobody was thinking of our children's safety. She hopes her daughter can get back to the sport she's played for years. She loves the sport and by these actions, he took that from her. Melissa Masiha, Team 10. Like, oh my God, like, is my chance. But this is the first of its kind. Casting a wide net to help. San Diego County is opening up the door for a program that gives people assistance when it comes to their security deposit. ABC 10 News reporter Ryan Hill tells us how this program works and the impact it'll have for one father. Yeah, this would be your application number. It takes courage to ask for help. My hardworking dad got three kids, one on the way. Julio de la Cruz Villegas is making that first step. I work pretty much every day and I do some after work jobs when I have to and need be and I just try to make ends mean. De La Cruz Villegas is not only applying for the county's rental assistance program at La Maestra Community Health Centers, but a new program that the county is rolling out to applicants on Friday. And that's for people that um, may be moving from one unit to another for whatever reason and, and they need assistance with that security deposit. This county program is funded by four million dollars worth of American Rescue Plan money. How it works is that eligible applicants can receive two months rent up to seven grand for their new security deposit from the county. And that really eliminates a barrier for a lot of people that may need help with coming up with that security deposit. Something that can be a struggle for people like De La Cruz Villegas. I need help right now. This program is like one of the bright, bright lights you see out there that are really hard to see in a dark place. There are thresholds people will have to meet to be eligible. Applicants have to meet an income limit at or below 120% of area median income. Translation, a single person household would have to bring home $101,800 or less. A family of four household would need to bring home $145,400 or less. This is the first of its kind in that it's helping any renter that meets the lower moderate income. Organizations like Maestra are helping people apply for the program. A program showing that even a little bit of help goes a long way. Having that somebody to help you gives you that, I want to say, a miracle or a help. Ryan Hill, ABC 10 News. 
The county says that the applicants will be chosen on a lottery style basis. La Maestra and the county still want people to apply because you never know if you'll get the benefits if you don't fill an out an application. According to the rent research site Zumper, rent prices have spiked 16% over the past year. That's about $300. On average, renters are spending around $2,000 a month. And for two bedrooms, that jumps to over $2,700 a month. While resources continue to build for renters, San Diego County is also lending a hand to some landlords. Rental assistance for small landlords programs is now taking applications to help independent small scale property owners who aren't being paid rent by their tenants. The county will pay up to $15,000 for rent that has accumulated since April of 2020 per award. One application per owner will be accepted.